Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we're doing something fun today. Um, happy Sunday on my end. We are going to, as well as cup, because I wanted some coffee. Every time I have something sweet, I want coffee with it for sure. But Four's Coffees, we cupped all their stuff yesterday. I'm gonna do another cupping on my own without the standout without the one that scored 90 points, and I'm gonna score those against each other. So like I said in the last video, when you have something really stand out on the table against others that are kind of similar, it kind of pushes down the others. So I, I feel like when I thought about it and I talked about it, that it in a, in, in a detrimental way skewed my scoring, okay? It kind of messed up my palate. <laughs> so I wanna score these four, it's these four, Okay, that, I mean, we have one in here that scored the, like, second best, right? But when I had my husband go and cup one of them, he actually liked the one that I gave the lowest score to. I saw that then it kind of messed with me, and I said, well, I better give it a second go. Um, okay, so we're going to do that, but they also gave me this chocolate, if you saw on my IG. So they also produce chocolate. They also farm chocolate. Um, and then he went to tell me, my contact, his name is Santiago, he told me that this is also a, uh, not the best business in terms of generating a lot of wealth for them as the farmer, and, um, oh shit, <laughs> I forgot to put the timer. All right, so that must have been what, like, I was two minutes talking, okay, two minutes, cool, see that, we can, we can work with it. That's what happens when you talk to camera. Anyway, um, so they have this other side business where you can um, get some chocolate too. So they gave me some chocolate to try and sample. Much more expensive business to be involved in, but it was so cool to just have the idea. And the point with this kind of chocolate, which is artisan chocolate, just like we have specialty coffee, this is like specialty chocolate. So they're also fermenting and experimenting with certain processes to bring out other types of cho uh, chocolate flavor notes within chocolate that doesn't just taste like chocolate in the same way that coffee can just taste more than just coffee, right? So I'm very interested in this. I don't think I've had anything like this before. Um, I mean, I've had high-end chocolates that you can get from Whole Foods. Does that count? I don't know. <laughs> um, I definitely talk about, you know, I've tasted high-quality dark chocolate before, which is what this is, about 70% cacao, dark chocolate, my favorite. But he was also talking about some other processes, and he said they process it a little bit better, similar fermentation with the coffee cherries, and roasted it and produced these chocolate bars with amazing results. Amazing results. That's generic. So we're going to try it now, okay? And we're gonna try it as we cup this coffee. So we'll first take a look, it's organic. I guess they mold and um, produce the chocolate here. A little broken, that's all right. Okay, stop and start. Okay. Now, my experience in chocolate is that there should be a snap to it and there also should be a certain amount of shine to it as well. Now it's melting in my hand right away, um, which isn't the best. The color also tells me something as well. Smell it, it smells like chocolate. <laughs> Now let's see the, the, um, the snap. That's a good snap. Okay. Okay. Um, we have about 50 seconds left here. Not as shiny as I've seen other chocolates be. Um, not a good thing or a bad thing, just a, an observation. You can definitely see some grains in it and I've never analyzed chocolate this well before but the fact that I watched uh what's his name Omarion or whatever that French dude <laughs> that chocolate chocolatier 
And then I've just been getting into chocolate randomly because I was making spicy chocolate for myself. I love spicy chocolate. It's really, it's not the easiest thing to find is to have like chili. I'm going to make my own for sure, just for my own consumption. Um, but yeah, so, all right. We were supposed to put the, break the crust on these. It smells older. Okay. Interesting. One smells older. It's a blind tasting. I have no idea. I don't remember what they are. And I said to myself, well, is that a problem? I better be able to tell what they are. And basically it's, um, it's just a quality control thing for, um, the yoga chef. And I think, uh, a Kauka that I was roasting for the Roaster's Choice. Roaster's Choice is Roaster's Choice. So I choose whatever the heck I want for that month. <laughs> and then I send it to those who have subscribed to Roaster's Choice. Now, I'm trying to give them variety. I'm trying to give them stuff that kind of falls in line with our offering philosophy, which is like juicy, sweet, good body. Um, it'll be rare that you'll find something in there is like super tea-like body or whatever. Um, Okay, so we're about two minutes in. I'm thinking this is the Year Chef, and this is the Kauka, because I think the Kauka is just a little bit older. It smelled older, which is a crazy thing to be saying now because I just had no idea what that was, but that's why you have to cup. That's why you have to ask other people, cup with other people for sure. If you can cup with some professionals, go to a cupping class if you can. Haseya has one. Um, I think Mill City Roasters has one. I don't know how they do it now. They have a free course though, so that check that out. Um, Clatch has one for sure. Um, so cup, learn how to cup and cup all the time. Don't just do it one time if you're actually serious about getting into coffee. I think cupping is maybe the number one skill that you should be starting on now that you have really complete control of is not expensive to do. All right, let's try some of this, this uh, chocolate. Mm. Yeah. They talked about fermenting it in a similar way to what they were doing with their fermentation coffee processes. And you can taste that there. There's this lively sort of cherry, very, very distinctly cherry, right? Distinctly dark cherry pulp flavor within there that's sitting right on top of a really nicely sweetened dark chocolate not waxy at all tastes all of chocolate a really nice balance between the sweet the bright there's a little grittiness to it in the best way Ooh. <laughs> Mmm, this is good. I would like to add a little spice to it, a little cayenne. And some kind of crackly thing. I love texture in, in my chocolate. So some kind of maybe rice crispy crackly or even just put the cocoa nibs in there, you know? I like that stuff. I kind of like that grit. It is fantastic. It's really good. Oh man. Comment down below if you would like to see my version of a chocolate bar. Would you buy it? It's expensive. It'd have to be worth it. It's like, can you get this kind of co this kind of chocolate in the store? I don't know. Maybe I should go look for some, compare it, and see. But it's not only that. But you're having a direct relationship with the farmer, who yes. It, it costs a lot because they need more to survive. They need more to like, quote unquote, live. And like, I mean, not to put the, the word live in quotes, but saying that when I say live, they need more to live and more to like, they have many children. They have, 
generations that they want to set up for, they have an extremely limited set of opportunities versus us here in the, in the United States and what my parents set me up for, creating, um, not only giving me nothing to worry about financially, but I think all the other stuff that goes with that, being raised in America, being raised in what I call the greatest country in the world. So, um, hmm, it might be something that I truly want to get into. And, and you know, last year, we gave our money straight up um, to Grounds for Health. But in a way, I didn't really see and get really get really to like experience what that money did. I know it went to good hands. I like just trusted it. You know, uh, they told me it went it went to women who were dealing with um, preventing cervical cancer and treating cervical cancer in the countries that produce and process coffee. Great. But then this year, I wanted to give my money in a charitable way that would also, I don't know, I would just be more connected to, you know. As much as I did, um, I didn't feel that connected. And that wasn't their fault. And then I don't think in particular it was mine. I feel like for what I could give financially, that was pretty good, you know. Like we gave over a grand of our proceeds back to um, back to grounds for health and we don't make a lot of money. <laughs> we don't make any money actually. And we have to fix that <laughs> because we're trying to make a business. So, um, I thought that was a pretty good deal, you know, but this year, maybe that, maybe that thousand bucks, which is still a lot of money, but maybe we put it towards something like chocolate that we can have more of a connection with and have more hands-on dealings with and and build both of our you know businesses up I don't know I gotta think about it okay this is the cow cup and the cow cup tastes a little hollow to me I think it needs a little bit right now it's tasting like just a really nice delicate light roast okay but I I think just what I prefer and I taste a little bit of the oldness in it it's not a bad thing per se, unless you're very persnickety about that kind of thing, in which case you probably wouldn't be buying from me. <laughs> uh, roast path, roast path. I put in roast path and it gave me roast duck. <laughs> it looks like a really good roast curve. You'll see it, I'll link it in the description. It's pretty, okay? And I wanna share this, it's pretty. It's a pretty curve. And you're like, cool, you did it. I think you did a fairly good job keeping this thing in check. But when I cup it, okay, and this is so important why to cup it. It's fine, but it's it's just like, I feel it's lacking body. It's lacking some, even though I got a good four minutes on the middle phase, I think I marked, I think if I look back at my notes, I remember now, I marked my dry in late. I think I was on my phone um, trying to share to social media. And uh, I think I marked my dry and late, but I adjusted for it in the roast for sure. I try to go a little bit darker with this because see, I'm dropping at 17% DTR. Because see, the, I'll, I'll uh, overlay for you. Um, and it looks, it looks pretty good. It looks fairly good. 11 minutes, it's kind of rounding out. It's becoming sweeter. It's getting better, so which is good. Sometimes it needs to cool to kind of reveal its true colors. It's still a um, relatively very fresh coffee as well. So really we're just looking for defect. Did I, did I underdevelop it? If anything, it would have been over. I think what I'm tasting, it's old. It's just old. There's a, there's sort of bagginess to it. Yurkashiv is nice, nice, good blueberries in there. That cream soda coming through again. Yeah. So Really good chocolate. Thank you so much to Forest Coffee for sending that to me. Um, I want to compare this to other things. I want to think about it. All right. Um, I'm a little, little producer. You know, I'm a little roaster. At the same time, I want to feel good about what I'm spending on. And I do want to get involved with Origin in some way. And I don't know if I'm really down to go there unless I had a guide and... 
that idea kind of scares me. Um, they also included this really cool cupping thing. And uh, I don't know if I'll use it. I'm, I'm going to think about it. I think, I think they have a really good tighter cupping score sheet here. Yeah, I'll think about it. I think I think that would be so cool to have our own line of chocolate. We've been actually talking about that. And then randomly, Santiago's like, we also produce chocolate. I was like, wow. And they gave me this whole packet to look at. And, and they do the labeling for us as well. So it could be a great way to get another income of business. And there is something I want to say with chocolate, too. I love chocolate. And I, I don't see enough spicy chocolates out there. Um, I think that'd be cool. And I love it with coffee. I think it's a perfect pairing. They just go hand in hand and they're like, they're like cousins, how they're processed in a way and how they're like grown and, and all that stuff. Like it's a really similar process, which is cool. So to me, it's like, why wouldn't we get involved with chocolate? And you could have the same relationship with the, with the farmer and they, they do both, you know, it's really kind of looking positive. <laughs> it's just a matter of cost, right? Um, which isn't that much, actually, if we were to start very, very small, if you think about it, right? It isn't that much. We're getting closer. I think, um, I think I'm still definitely, I'm on the fence of purchasing this very special coffee. I think it's that special, and I think you guys should try it. Um, and we got to figure out an appropriate way to present it to you because it's that special, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited. So much to do. And um, some other exciting stuff happening on finding a facility. Exciting in the way of organizing and finally kind of getting a grip on how to start breaking down the task of, okay, I found a place. Okay, I looked at the place and say that looks really good. Now now comes down to like how do I how do I find out what the facility needs based on the city and the permitting and the building and safety and the planning department and all that stuff. Like that is a whole other thing which I think would be very helpful to share along my journey. Um if we if we get there, right? So let's see. Let's see. Um okay. So good things, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.